Hospitality. Uh, when you first hear that word, um, you may have some thoughts. I had some thoughts when I received an email from Crate and Barrel. Hospitality, uh, Crate and Barrel would say, is to do uh, six steps. One is to make sure your invitations are sent, plan your menu, set a beautiful table, uh, have a center of attraction floral arrangement, be sure to get your turkey toolkit, and then dinner, voila, is served. <laughs> Hence, hospitality. Uh, perhaps you have an idea of hospitality in terms of entertaining those that you love. They come into your home and you want to ensure that they would have, everyone would have a good time. Perhaps in the church context, you might come across the word hospitality and you might think, oh yeah, greeters ministry, or cookies and punch, or donuts and coffee, between services or certainly before Sunday school. I want you to keep those in mind as we add to your fund of knowledge about what biblical hospitality is. Because biblical hospitality is one, commanded by God. So, so in Romans and in 1 Peter, in fact, 1 Peter says with regard to hospitality, we're not to complain, and that's a command. It is not only commanded by God, it is the responsibility of leaders. Now this is interesting because hospitality shows up in 1 Timothy as well as Titus chapter one. Hmm, responsibility of leaders. So in the first century, they would be male or female? Male. So who are the ones that are supposed to be hospitable? Our male leaders. But not to let us off the hook, also in 1 Timothy, we see a list of characteristics that if a widow was to receive um, concern and help from the church, she had to have a, a, a particular reputation. And one of the characteristics of that reputation was that she was to express and exercise hospitality, showing hospitality to strangers. So, Hospitality is not only commanded by God, it is a responsibility of leaders and leaders, male and female. Hospitality is also an indication of a true disciple. Jesus would say this in Matthew 25. One of the markers or characteristics of a true follower of Christ is that they are hospitable. And the fourth and final point that I, make, I might make here with regard to hospitality is that it crosses social barriers. So for just a, a split second, I'm going to take you to Leviticus 19, where in Leviticus 19, God says that hospitality is to be extended across racial barriers. Old Testament. And in the New Testament, hospitality was supposed to cross the social barriers of class. And in James, hospitality was to cross the social barrier of status. So hospitality is commanded by God. It's a characteristic of, of leaders. It is a marker for all believers. And it crosses the social barriers of race, status, and class. And that's because hospitality has this extremely strong component of extending friendship to a stranger. It's not the Martha Stewart dinner table, and it's not so much the crate and barrel. But to add to our fund of knowledge in terms of hospitality, biblical hospitality is comprised of this, extending friendship to a stranger. Parker Palmer says this about hospitality. He describes it as inviting the stranger into our private space, whether that be the space of our home or the space of our personal awareness and concern. And when we do so, some important transformations occur. Our private space is suddenly enlarged, no longer tight or cramped or restricted, but open and expansive and free. And our space may be illumined, i.e., lit. Hospitality to the stranger gives us a chance to see our own lives afresh through different eyes. And why is it that we can extend hospitality? It's because God always does the initiating. And in response, we respond to him in obedience. 
God always does the initiating. We never have to dream up anything. He's always initiating. And our responsibility is to be so in tune to his spirit that then we would respond in obedience. This may sound familiar. We love because he first loved us. We are able to forgive because he first forgave us. We are able to extend friendship to a stranger because he first extended friendship to this stranger. As my students and others have reflected on this exercise of hospitality, I'd like to share with you a few of their responses. This is a thought from Rosario. She says this, Spending time with others has been a challenge this semester because of the season I am in right now. But through this means of grace, of hospitality, God has shown me that no matter how busy I may be, extending love and friendship to others at all times is what will distinguish me as his follower. Andrea says this, riches, appearance, reciprocation, recognition, and many of the other determining qualities of our relationships are of no value to the Lord. I'm hesitant to extend myself because I'm afraid I have nothing to extend. I am waiting for a time when I will be in a better position to be hospitable. This is often how every period of my life has been so far. When I'm a teenager, when I'm a teenager then I'll be more ready to make an impact. When I'm in college, then I will be responsible. When I have my own place, then I can truly be selfless toward people and live for Christ. When I am married, then I will have things to share, abilities to mentor, and faculties to influence people. She continues, this is a tactic of the evil one to keep me from making an impact. I have always had an excuse, always. The desires and the dreams to be hospitable are not enough, and it doesn't help that I have had a limited view of hospitality up until this point. Eric says this, God revealed to me how I have, as Peter puts it, grumbled while showing hospitality to others. My heart didn't align with Jesus', Jesus as though my outward actions appeared to have. This week, I had a really awesome ex opportunity to exercise hospitality by extending friendship and time to someone whom I wouldn't necessarily hang out with. Instead of the usual, hello, how are you? I took the time to really talk and listen to this person. I sort of think it was as welcoming them into my heart rather than my home by really listening and caring, caring about others. Too many times in the past, I remember that I've treated people as if they were merely a roadblock in my day, as if they were getting in my way from my true objectives for the day. That doesn't sound like Christ at all. I want to see people as God sees them and to treat them like they were just as important as myself and my own needs. Getting a more biblical understanding on hospitality has helped me see more clearly what God's heart looks like in this means of grace. And finally, Mariah adds this. My hospitality opportunity came to me without even thinking about it. I was blessed by this means of grace when exploring and seeing how God wanted me as his child to show and portray his love through simply reaching out to strangers and extending friendship to them. Biblical hospitality is something that I definitely need to work on. I tend to focus on myself and the things I need to get done that day without stopping and perhaps meeting someone new that seems to be lonely and needs a friend. I, it was a learning experience for me to really look around and seeing how I could serve someone in this way of extending friendship to someone for the glory of my very hospitable God. So in our lives, who is the stranger that we are to extend friendship to? Perhaps it literally is a stranger, someone with whom you have no idea, no, no idea of their story, no idea of who they are.
Perhaps it's those who are around us, even at the tables, who were strangers when we first arrived, but now they are friends. Perhaps those that, uh, if you're at South Coast Plaza, or I'm going to be going to the Block Outlet Mall after, after this event, uh, strangers that we come across. Oh, but I'm going with some colleagues, so that makes it better, right? <laughs> uh, people that we don't know. Uh, people that God allows to cross our paths as strangers giving us opportunities to extend friendship to them. Perhaps a stranger is an acquaintance, someone you may not call friend quite yet. You know of them, and you know things about them, but you don't know them. And God is extending, once again, an opportunity for you to extend friendship to this stranger. Perhaps that stranger is a relative of yours who will walk into your home and sit at your beautifully decorated tables, and enjoy your scrumptiously provided meal. But you know nothing about them. Or perhaps distance, not physical, but emotional distance has kept you distant and has kept this person a stranger in your life. Perhaps God is giving you this opportunity to extend friendship to this stranger someone who is not like us. Remembering that hospitality crosses the barriers of status, class, and race. I've sometimes heard it said that when it comes to diversity, that we should just kind of look beyond a person's race, status, and class, and just look at the person they are within. I don't know, as I pondered on that, I thought, would that be negating how God has made us to be so very, very different? Perhaps he's made us so different so that when we extend friendship to a stranger, we have to depend on his spirit. And as we extend friendship to a stranger and that stranger becomes our friend, it gives evidence to the power of the gospel. And that perhaps if everyone were just like us, that gospel wouldn't shine. Perhaps we tend to hang around people who are just like us, and we associate with people who are just like us. And God's reminding us today that in hospitality, the way it's exercised in his kingdom is extending friendship to a stranger. We give evidence to the spirit living in us when we are present with others who are not like us when we accept them and we become more dependent on God's spirit to do the work, because I can't. As we grow in this extension of friendship to a stranger, it will be dependent on our knowing him. I say this often, that it is difficult to trust someone that you do not know. It is difficult to trust his spirit if you don't know him. So might I challenge you, this season to get to know him. Perhaps in some of our Christmas carols, the ones that have uh, quite a bit of heavy and good theology, perhaps it might mean not singing those carols, but allowing those lyrics to be a prayer. Perhaps not singing, but just praying the lyrics. O come, all ye faithful. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, God and sinner reconciled. How do we exercise this hospitality as we extend this God-given gift to others? Perhaps it, is, uh, perhaps it will look just like this, being present with one another, I know I've had to learn when I'm present with someone to actually look them in the eyes instead of looking beyond them. Though my voice is connected uh, or directed in that uh, direction, my eyes are traveling elsewhere and my thoughts are a million miles away. Can we learn, as Judy had mentioned, to be present? Because after all, God has been present with us. He always does the initiating so we can learn to be present as God has been present with us. 
In addition to being present, sometimes we as women feel like we have to have the answers to everything. How about if we came up with a really well-framed question? We don't have to have the answers. And a well-framed question allows this. For the other person to know that we really care about their answers and that we don't have to give them ours. So being present and being um, open to a well-framed question, being attentive to one another. Sometimes you talk about, uh, oh, what's the word? It's the other A word. Um, accountable. You know, we have accountability partners, and I'm all for accountability partners. But sometimes in accountability partners, we focus on our behavior. Oh, yes, I read my Bible today. Oh, yes, I did this, and yes, I did that. But I think we can hide, oftentimes, behind our actions. Do we have someone in our lives, as Klaus Sissler describes, someone who is in our faces and by our sides, who are attentive to our hearts, attentive to our hearts, from which flow the issues of life? Do we have someone in our lives that we allow to be attentive to our hearts? God extended his friendship to us through this Prince of Peace, Messiah, Savior of the world, the Christ. He is present with us, so therefore, we can be present with others. He asks some well-framed questions of us. Therefore, we can ask some well-framed questions of others. He has accepted us, and therefore, we can extend hospitality, friendship to a stranger, and accept them. You see, this aspect of hospitality is not merely something that we do. It is a lifestyle. It goes beyond our Thanksgiving and our Christmas meals and celebrations. It is a matter of how we do life. It's a lifestyle of extending friendship to a stranger. Parker Palmer spoke of these transformations that happen within us. Certainly there's transformation to those who, to whom we extend friendship. But I believe he also speaks of the transformation that happens to us. So right now, I would like to ask you um, to raise your hands if you have a phone. <laughs> wow, okay. I'd like for you to pull your phone out. I know that's kind of odd to do. People normally put their phones out and, or put them away and <laughs> silence them. I'd like for you to pull your phones out. I'd like for you to find your iTorch or your flashlight app. I know, if you're like me, it'll take a minute. <laughs> I'd like for you to find your iTorch app or a flashlight. And in 15 seconds, I'd like for you to, any more? I'd like for you to raise your lights. And I'd like for you to look around as I offer this blessing. Raise them high. So let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus says, I am the light. And he follows it and you'll see this on our library entrance and exit. He follows it with, you are the light of the world. And Paul would echo the same thing. Do everything without grumbling, so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world. Would we, as we extend friendship to a stranger, give evidence 
to the heart of the Father, the power of his intimate spirit, and the friendship with our Messiah. And all God's daughters said, Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.